Hey guys, welcome back to Carnal Dish. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make an easy, foolproof pizza dough and no-cook pizza sauce right at home that will give you results very similar to an actual brick oven pizza. The main tool you need for this recipe is a kitchen scale. Using a kitchen scale to weigh the ingredients will help you achieve consistent, perfect results each and every time. Using measuring cups and spoons will have you wondering, what did I do wrong? So grab your kitchen scale, some flour, and some high quality tomatoes, and let's get started. So the first thing that I'm doing is weighing out 153 grams of all-purpose flour and 153 grams of double zero flour. Double zero flour is the bomb. So if you can get your hands on it, please use it. If you can't find it, just use all, all-purpose or all-purpose and bread flour. Just use whatever you have. And we're gonna add eight grams of salt. It can be kosher or table salt. Mix that around, make sure that everything is evenly combined. Next, I'm gonna measure out two grams of yeast. I'm using active dry, you can use instant, doesn't really matter, and four grams of olive oil. Then we're gonna add 200 grams of warm water. Make sure that your water is not too hot. You'll kill the yeast and your dough won't rise, so sure it's like between 90 and 100 degrees and mix that around until all of the yeast has dissolved. We're going to add the flour and salt mixture to the wet mixture and just bring that together. You know, use your fingers or a spoon. I highly recommend your fingers. You want to be able to feel the dough and just press all the dry air pockets, you know, together and make sure that everything has come together to a ball. At this point, we're gonna let the dough rest and hydrate for 15 minutes. So just do this right on your countertop, and what's gonna happen is the liquid is going to fully absorb into the flour, and we're just going to start to knead the dough after 15 minutes for only three minutes. And you just wanna do this to develop a little bit of gluten and some structure. And then we're gonna divide the dough into two balls this pizza this uh, recipe will make two 12 inch pizzas so we're just going to make sure that each ball is nice and smooth and we're going to put that back into the bowl with a little bit of olive oil so that you know a skin doesn't develop and they don't dry out too much so just mas massage the oil into the dough very gently make sure it's completely covered and we're just going to put this into the refrigerator and let it ferment overnight for about 12 hours to 24 and up to seven days. So now it's time to make our sauce and I'm using very good quality San Marzano tomatoes. And depending on the brand that you use, you know, some of the liquid can be like super watery and some can be thick like this one. If it's super watery, don't add it all. You don't need all that extra juice. I'm gonna add a little bit of um, anchovy paste. Now this is something that if you don't have it, you don't have to add it, it doesn't matter. Just adds a nice punch of flavor. I'm gonna add three cloves of garlic and about a tablespoon or so of dried oregano and a splash of red wine vinegar. Um, some crushed red pepper and a good amount of salt just to bring out all of those flavors. I'm using some black pepper here. And we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. For some richness. You're gonna put the lid on and give this a good zap for about a minute or so. Um, just make sure everything is evenly distributed and combined and nothing's too chunky. Give it a taste, see what it needs. Mine was perfect after that and I just wanted to put this into a separate container and let it chill. So the very next day you're going to preheat your oven to 550 degrees with your pizza stone on the very top rack and let that get hot on its own for about 45 minutes to an hour. This is our dough straight out of the fridge looking like some butt cheeks <laughs> and we're going to um, basically just bring this dough um, to room temperature because right now it's too cold and it's too hard to work with. So put this on a floured surface and just let it come to room temperature about 45 minutes. You only need to do this if you didn't refrigerate your dough. If you let it sit for about four or five hours on your countertop, you can go ahead and start working with it right away after it rises a little bit. So I'm just gonna put mine on the flour surface and 45 minutes later, 
It's nice room temperature, being a little bit puffier, and it's a lot easier to work with, so I'm gonna go ahead and shape it into a pizza round. If you happen to hear any loud crunching in the background, that's my dog eating her food. She's really loud and rude with it. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna get, go ahead and flower a surface and start just shaping the dough very gently. Um, you don't want to be like too rough with this. Just kind of like pay attention to it. If it's snapping back too much, then it needs to relax at room temperature a little bit more. But try to shape it into a 12 inch round. And we're going to put some cornmeal down, the cheap kind, or you can use semolina. And this will just help give the crust a little bit more structure and help it slide easily off the parchment paper. So put the dough onto the cornmeal parchment paper and we're going to just go ahead and start building the pizza so grab your sauce you will not need a lot of sauce here you guys please don't be tempted to just pile this pizza high with toppings like this dough is very delicate so you don't want to overdo it just just put enough so that there's a good ratio too many toppings even too much cheese will weigh it down and it'll be like super floppy and soggy so I'm using some um, red sweet peppers, bell peppers, and some baby bellas that I chopped up, some hot Italian sausage that I took out of the casing. And it's raw, but don't worry, it'll cook in the super hot oven. And I'm using burrata cheese. You can use regular mozzarella, a combination of your favorite cheeses, just don't use too much. And I'm basically just scattering the burrata around. And what's gonna happen is, as it melts, it's gonna cover the entire pie and some torn up basil, just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on the top to, pro to promote some browning. And I'm gonna hit it with some freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, the good stuff. Don't use the cheap stuff, please. It will not melt very well. It won't taste good either. And this is just um, a sprinkling of some bread seasoning. I'll link it below. You're gonna wanna trim the edges of your parchment otherwise it will burn in the oven very badly so we're going to put this pizza on top of that searing hot pizza stone if you don't have a pizza stone you can use the back of a baking sheet or if you have a cast iron pizza stone or even a cast iron skillet um, just make sure that the dough will fit inside of the skillet you want to use something that can retain heat very well my pizza literally took six minutes to bake and get super delicious, but look how much the parchment burned. So this is why, you know, it's important to make sure that you fit the parchment to the size of your baking stone. If you have a rectangular one, you may, I would still do it anyway. So now that the pizza's done, I'm just gonna hit it with some more Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, some fresh basil, I absolutely love using basil. It just perfumes the whole pie. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Go ahead and slice your pizza. You wanna let it rest about a minute or two before you slice it, just so that everything can come together and kind of set up. But it's time to eat this baby, so let's give it a taste. Perfect bottom, it's delicious. Nice and spicy sausage and that burrata cheese is killer. Make this pizza dough, this pizza sauce, and put whatever you want on your pizza, just make it. You're gonna love it. Domino's who? Pizza what? Child please. Bye.